Christmas to everyone. And as always, I know how to interrupt a good conversation that I should have had recorded, but I just keep missing these. Oh, <laughs> <Well>, you know. <laughs> It wasn't much. It was just, I was opting to be bullied on. Like, that's really all that it was. Like, I was opting to take the whole tension away and be like, just make fun of my comment, like y'all did last week. That's really all it was. Yeah. <laughs> well, you kind of stepped in it. I got to say, you stepped in it. So. You know, y'all took it and ran yep. in the wrong direction. It was meant to go right. one way. You y'all said when to- I, when we're oh, old, wow. like at 50 or something, how can you, you not take old. that the I wrong like, way? Okay. Old? okay. Oh, hold on, Stephanie. I feel like I need to defend myself here in this conversation. <laughs> I know. It. Me too. I'm already yeah, yeah, Let me help. Let mm. me uh, clarify. I was talking about my husband doesn't go to Comic Cons with me. And I'm trying okay. to make it a family thing, right? Because right. like I'm 29, he's 27, and we have two girls that are one and two, right? So I was wow. like, I want to start going now together collectively as a family and not like when we're older, like no, 50. You said old. And we get out of the house and then we start doing it together. And that's right, when right, they right. were like, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. You know, and they took it Just the wrong way. Just girl. Time will catch up. I know. But it, oh, my yeah. God. You don't even no, want no, it to no, get there right. that fast. Definitely, you don't want it to get there that fast. Getting old sucks. I'm just saying. It, I'm okay. Like I'm okay with it. You know, but I don't yeah. want to. Like I don't. I don't know. I'm okay with yeah. getting older. Like that's whatever. But the thing is, right. is like I see my kids growing. Like I can't believe yeah. I have like a two year old. You know, and that's where I'm like, just right. stop. So yeah. Well, yeah. you know, it's an aging thing. You know, your body's gonna age, but as long as you're young at heart, you're still good to go. Oh, that's right. the way we to do it. We can play. We yeah. can play. I mean, it's how many? I call it. Play. It's, just the, it's the Peter we Pan syndrome. Mm-hmm. Can't yeah. control how, how, how tall we like are. We, I mean, yes. yeah, I love it. it. We're gonna it get old, and <laughs> and you need to like own every single one of these years. I'm telling you right now. I yes. people are like. How old are you? And some women are like, I'm not going to tell you how old I am. Hey, I earned every single one of them years. I am 49 and I earned them all. Girl, I'm I am 29 and this, got hair. I'm not okay with it. I see see this gray in my beard? 39, I get it. I'm in show business and now it's like, psh, this is a rite of passage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You see all this here. gray here? I'm my dues. <laughs> <laughs> really? I can't say, like, really? <laughs> I'm just saying. I think- I earned them all. I should have been dead multiple times. So the fact that I'm exactly. sitting here at 49, I own them. Nice. I think exactly. in a couple of years, I can play Santa Claus. Yes. <laughs> yes. Keep it yes. That's right. You're, you don't know if it's going to get wider or not, right? Like, uh, always Trevor's looks really cool. His looks yeah. like an admiral. He has like silver through here. And then yeah. his cheeks and stuff are like this copper and really? blonde. And wow. yeah, it's really pretty mm-hmm. cool. So my mom yeah. always called him the Admiral because he looks like, yeah. you know, the distinguished Admiral because he did a no shave November one year. Yeah. Yeah. It was really itchy. It didn't last for very long. Well, yeah. one thing that I do want to do is I want to send out prayers again to people in New Orleans and everybody who was in path of Ida. They had major tornadoes up in Pennsylvania and mass flooding. Mm-hmm. So definitely. Uh, four, category four. And also the military people because I know they're the heart and soul of everything right now. Man, so yeah. they really yeah. So Those funny. are the main things I wanted to get to, but do want to welcome our guest this way. I always get this backwards here. <laughs> Stephanie mm-hmm. Nadoni, who is voice actress for Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z or Ebony. DBZ is a lot of people. Yay! friends now like i know these people well we went through like it's it's that um traumatic what's what is that this traumatic experience that binds you (laughs) we went through the trauma (laughs) of comic con (laughs) row oh right comic con i know but gosh you guys made the trip and the convention so much fun like i mean coming away meeting amazing people is the best part for me i mean staff vendors uh, authors you guys are authors mm-hmm. and i mean i I'm, this podcast this is great like this that's that's what i enjoy most about the cons is getting out and meeting other people not even necessarily like i love the fans like that's awesome <laughs> but i like meeting the other guests and the other people involved in putting it mm-hmm. together and taking care of everybody and you guys did man it was like do you guys need anything is everybody happy everybody's good all right <laughs> you know you had your walkie talkies you were like taking care of everybody i was like this is like crazy so awesome. i know it's Thank like i go around the artists and vendors and y'all mm-hmm. i'm like are you happy if you're not get yes. happy 
And then <laughs> we're gonna walk away. To if I'm you happy, happy, if you're happy, I'm happy. Nope. If I'm happy, we're all happy. So exactly. So let's just keep this happy, happy thing going. Be happy. <laughs> it's infectious. If you're not happy, get happy. Definitely. Yes. Like what's that but, song? Um, look, hey. Don't worry. Hey, yeah. Hey. Yes. That's I can't remember the artist yes. that did that song, Don't Worry, Be Happy, but it was he made it a point to be like, if you if you're not happy, you call me and I make you happy. Yes. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. But, the uh, one thing I did want to ask you is because you did get into voice acting and you did and you are a singer, if I'm correct. You are definitely a singer yes. for one of the bands. Now, I did see that you are from Nashville. Now, did that have anything to do to relate with you moving that direction? Would you say oh, music? Actually, yes. Memphis. I'm sorry. I have to Memphis. Like, Memphis. That's okay. Hey, Nashville, no worries. So I did take it, make a trek to Nashville in my 20s to try to make it as a country music singer. I literally was walking the streets of Nashville. I was like 24, had my little demo, my little packet, and like, you know, knocking on doors. Like, I had no idea what I was doing. That is definitely not the way to open doors and oh, knock on doors in Nashville, Tennessee, trying to make it as a country music singer. But they all wanted me to move there and get a pay some serious hard dues and live there and for years and years before they would even consider that kind of an option. But no, it, I, I mean, I think it, I think I would have pursued music and singing regardless of where I was born. I mean, I just happened to be born in Memphis, Tennessee. We did end up moving away when I was four or five to Houston. And then from then on, it was literally every year and a half or so, but I now claim Texas as my home state. I've lived here since 1988 and most of my life. So, but, my roots and everything, a lot of my extended family are still in the Memphis, Tennessee area. But I think I was yeah. going to just, I was attracted to music regardless. My, my parents were both into music and um, not as careers, but we always had music. We always had a stereo. There was always music playing. And man, I latched onto it before I could even talk and sing before you well, can talk, dance before you can walk. I, I love knew, Tennessee. I, knew, I mean, I knew I was going to get into show business. I mean, I was going to find a way to be <laughs> submerged in it somehow, whether, I mean, whether I was going to be singing or teaching, I don't know. I wanted to, I wanted to sing and perform. That's, that, that, I knew that's what I'm going to do. I got <laughs> made fun of for it. The kids in school were like, how do you, I'm like, whatever, you know, I'm like, no, I'm going to do it. I'm going to be, a, I'm going to be a singer. I am. I really am. So now when you go back to the different writing. reunions, you can be like, see, I told you. <laughs> yeah, I got to. I did end up at my ten-year reunion, and that was a crucial year for me because Mom was fighting cancer at the time, and she was only fifty. Well, I guess she had just turned fifty-one, and um, I went back to the city to the ten-year reunion, in Coffeyville, Kansas, where we lived for three years. And I didn't get to graduate there, but I was wanted to because that's kind of where I finally felt like I was kind of fitting in from like moving around a lot. And then boom, we moved again, like in my literally the end of my junior year. So I went back to that reunion, not my. Texas reunion because those were my like those are the people that I spent those crucial years with you know eighth through eleventh mm -hmm. grade that's a big one mm -hmm. and, but it was the city where she got the toxic exposure which led to her cancer and then unfortunately to her death so 1999 was a rough year for for me but that's also the year that I got cast as Gohan in Dragon Ball Z so we we're able to kind of share nice. some of that nice watch it on TV Cartoon Network and Mom was like Seventy <laughs> what's the name of your character again is it Gonad I'm like, no, Mama, not Gonad. It's <laughs> hilarious, y'all. Mm. Funny, funny, sweet. I love my mama. Miss her. But yeah, so that's kind of how it all came together. But I was singing already. Like, I, I was already singing in a show band. In fact, it's our 50th year. The reunion is, is this month, like in Dallas. There's one in New Orleans and there's one in Dallas. The band originated in 1971 on Bourbon Street. So uh, a lot of friends and extended friends family friends through Vince Vance and the Valiants um, are in that region being that that's where the band originated. And, you know, as a, as a band, a touring show band, we were constantly in new Orleans for Mardi Gras for all of the opening up for, you know, the big names, Huey Lewis, Vanessa Williams, Casey and the sunshine band. Um, gosh, it was just Harry Connick. Mm -hmm. I could go on and on. I've got photo albums, you know, I have my <laughs> camera, my little Kodak <laughs> back in the day. Yeah, I see, but now people are now people are doing that with you because they're kind of like, oh, it's Stephanie, and then you take pictures with you. Yeah, there's so. Is that ever weird? Me. Does that ever feel weird to you? To what have pics done? Yeah, that people want their pictures taken with you. 
Uh, I would feel weird, kind of self conscious. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, especially for being a. I mean, when I was cast as as Gohan, I mean, there, you don't really nobody really sees the voice actor per se unless they're they are at an appearance. Mm -hmm. um, my first convention, Comic Con in San Diego in two thousand was. Uh, San Diego Comic Con, and I didn't even know what Comic Cons were. I didn't know what anime was. I mean, I was just going to work, doing my job, being a voice actor, and I thought I'd be cast, if anything, as a female character. And it, it threw me for a loop that they wanted me to be a voice of a little boy. Um, but going to the convention, it, it, this was early on, and the the fans were well, pre age from like five to teens, and they're like, "Well, you're not." I was there with three other voice actors that were male male characters, and so well, males male people they were males and so i had to prove it the whole weekend i had to do that voice like i swam go on can't you tell <laughs> and they were just like i had to do the voice that they did not believe oh my gosh i mean now i think people know but i had to prove it yeah. i do remember Completely seeing your video yeah <laughs> but yeah. san diego that's a big one now that's that was a big one i mean it was crazy yes. like i had no idea i mean i was like freaking out at me i mean i just did a convention with lou frigno and the, lou frigno was there and i no I way up in the 80s with uh the whole incredible hulk thing and there were star wars um i did a convention with peter mayhew chewbacca over in australia in 2002 um i was like what am i doing here with all these famous people it's <laughs> <laughs> a voice actor you know i'm just a singer and voice actor i'm not i'm not famous like these people i'm not a celebrity but I mean, how did you world, get I into guess. it no. How did I get into the the voice acting? Voice industry? acting, yeah. Singing in a studio, um, cutting tracks for an album, original album with uh, Carl Finch of Brave Combo. He's a oh, that's a world renowned um, Grammy award winning polka band out of Denton, Texas, which is right up the street for me. And I'd been going to UNT uh, up in Denton for college, and I had kind of you know met some of the Brave Combo guys in and out of working with Vince Vance and the Valiants because we were kind of opening for each other at the festivals and the fairs and the German fest and things like that. And so I got to know uh, Carl Finch personally and was sitting in with them. And then I uh, started being a fan of their music. And next thing you know, Carl's like, well, we want you to sing with us and record some albums with us. And so I ended up in the studio with them working on projects with them. And we did our own studio album called the cookies, which I'm hoping to get online soon. It, it needs to get up now that there's all this technology and we can share music and things like that. So I want to get out there. Fans are like asking me for it for years. This was like late nineties. But, um, so I was working with Carl on another project called Cyborgs, and, um, I was singing some Battlestar Galactica type vocals in the background. And that project was a Funimation project, which Funimation was around at the time. It was a little bitty baby company. Now this is big <laughs> giant company, but, um, I met the producer of who was already recording the, the voices from the ocean dub up in Canada. And when I met uh, Barry Watson there, he's like, have you ever done any voice work? And I'm like, I, I do voices for fun. You know, I've, I've been doing funny, crazy, insane voices since I was a kid. And he said, well, here's my card, you know, when he was listening to the singing and things like that. And he, I guess he heard a quality in my voice that was, uh, caught his attention. And so when the auditions, came to the Dallas Fort Worth area I was contacted and I showed up and I was like I'm here to audition for something <laughs> involving voices um I don't know I've why I'm here but a lot <laughs> what do you got for me so yeah I had no idea what uh, Japanese anime was I didn't know what Dragon Ball was Dragon Ball Z I, there were no vo voice references there was no mimicking it was just straight up audition and it was who it was who I knew I mean I, I was in an industry where things were swirling around and these were not open auditions by any means. Um, to this day, I'm sure they're not um, e anymore. Um, but yeah, that's how yeah, all. It's... Yeah, and we were all kind of running around, kind of Denton, Louisville, North North Texas, North Dallas, Fort Worth area, and we kind of ran in some of the same circles. So I really met the right people at the right time by by doing my singing and by getting in the studio and recording, and that's kind of how it all started for me in the voice acting business. So what's next? It, what is next, next for Stephanie? What's next? <laughs> what any more voice? No, no, no. any more voice acting? Are you going to try to pursue any more voice acting? Are you going to be doing the mm -hmm. singing more? Which well, have you I'm, I'm at a point in my life where I can make decisions. Of, I mean, I was just taking whatever work I could get my hands on. I'm a workaholic, and I was um, 
my mom had just passed and I was like having to literally rebuild my life from scratch, you know, and mm. she was a matriarch and she was my biggest fan and she was always doing her best to uh, see to it that I could pursue acting, singing, and uh, dancing, drama, baton, I mean, anything that involved performing. Um, unfortunately, my stepdad was transferred a lot, so we were kind of following him around and I couldn't, you know, go to LA or New York and be like, whatever, by Broadway. I was, I had all these aspirations as a child. I was really hoping to be a, a child performer um, and a recording artist by my teens, but that, that unfortunately didn't happen. Um, they had to get me through school and then once I hit college, you know, and I was going to, I was going to go get a degree, you know, get my backup plan in case anything didn't work out. And then I got the opportunity to join a show band. And I was like, that was it for me. Like I was addicted to show business. And once I started making money at it and, and traveling and seeing the world and performing with this amazing show band, I was, I was hooked. I, I, I didn't, I never went back. I thought I'd go back, but I didn't. I, st I stuck with it for, you know, now we're almost 30 years into my career. So Yeah. Um, now I'm just, I'm at a point now where I'm like, you know, yeah, I mean, I miss the voice acting. I, I'm, I'm ready to get back into it and maybe get a, a different agent and get somebody um, helping me get more auditions and just kind of with the pandemic, my band Moonglass had to be put on hold. I had to kind of uh, reassess where uh, I was going to be going with my career in general and with my band members and things like that. So uh we were forced to take the year off whether we liked it or not didn't we all yeah. i mean we all had to kind of pretty much everybody did yeah because yeah, it hurt did. with conventions <laughs> mm -hmm. except the the hand sanitizer businesses the plexiglass they were booming for real and um, toilet paper yeah. for some reason and toilet paper paper products yeah um no i mean I, i've just been picking up all kinds of like right today i worked with a i'm mentoring a, a voice actor who is quite talented i'm really proud of the guy um he's actually producing his own show and He's a, uh, a really, he's got the talent, he's got the chops, and now he's he's actually putting together his own show and working with some animators. And now I came over and auditioned for <laughs> his show. I'm so over the moon for this guy. I'm like, he's got his own website. He's, I'm like, hell, you're halfway there, dude. You've got this. It's yeah. just a matter of timing and getting the right funding. And and um, he does several voices on his own show, and he's really that good. Like he's he's and he has a concept he's going to be writing scripts so uh i'm working on that and then um i'm teaching music and vocals to kids uh well actually all the way up into their 40s anybody that wants to take voice lessons so that's been a whole new avenue for me is teaching voice i mean i've, I've been doing it my whole life but to actually jump back and realize how to teach it has been like a whole ball, different ball of wax i mean so you, that's you a know. whole nother level because there's yeah. stuff that i can do but to do it and to teach it and are like two teach completely it, different. Yeah. Something that's just innate, something that's just second nature for me that, you know, I've been doing since I was what, two, three. Um, so, I mean, I can't teach somebody to have talent. I can't teach somebody to have a good ear, like to listen to chords and structures and, and notes. And it's something that it, it's always easier to teach someone who uh, already has that, but, I'm I'm open book. I mean, I'm like if they if they want to pursue it, then they book me and I'm I'm there. I'll I'll I will be there to help encourage and guide them to the best of my ability. And then it's kind of up to them to 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 go go out and either get further lessons or um, find a way to showcase their talent through talent shows and things like that. But I can definitely do my part and helping encourage them and make it fun and exciting and give them a nice escape, which was for me, my whole life is music's been my escape. It's been my therapy. That and laughter, uh, right? Oh, laughter yeah. is always a good thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and with Vince Vance, gotta, we were able to do all of that. Being dancing, gotta, acting, gotta enjoy kids. life. So yeah. out of all of your career, which you said is span between 30 years, I think you said 30 ish years. Yeah. I, I started uh, when I was a fetus. Yep. Mm -hmm. just, just <laughs> Wait, so then you're right at 30 years then. Okay. She's that only she's right. only plenty nine. Yes. <laughs> 32 and a half. No. <laughs> That's the so big in your 30-ish years in the, your career, is there one moment that stood out to you? Oh my gosh, there's been so many. Um like what's your funniest moment once your, you know, saddest moment, what's your proudest moment, that sort of stuff. Oh my gosh. Well, with the singing, um, 
performing at the Superdome with thousands and thousands of people in the audience. Um, that would that be huge. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and with the big names, right? Like, I mean, I grew up with disco. Like, I was meeting KC and KC and the Sunshine Band. You know, Huey Lewis. This is like, wow. Mm -hmm. I'm so um, jealous. Oh my gosh. That oh, I had my camera every I mean, I've got like I said, I have photo albums. So okay. You didn't have right. cell phones back then or digital mm -hmm. yeah. cameras. Yeah, you, you had know, to like but... pray you got the picture correct <laughs> on like three yes. or four shots because you wouldn't know until you developed the film. Which is right, gonna exactly. take about three no, months. You had, to wait. <laughs> you had to wait several days and then when they had one hour yeah. hour processing, it was like, Oh my god, oh my god. And people were like, Well, you just took the picture. I know, but I want to see how it turns out. Like now yeah. you can do this. I this, need to know this, if my this. finger's in the way or <laughs> I forgot the oh, lens yeah. cap was on. You know, you never know. And that moment's gone. Yeah. I know. And it's like now it's like, gosh, so many opportunities to capture moments. And it's like sometimes people don't want to be don't take me. <laughs> don't take that picture. <laughs> Yeah, so, but it's yeah. like, come on. Yeah, I have video camera. I have a video camera too that I carried around with me and kind of started a trend with the with the band. And then next thing you know, the other girls and the three girl singers. We had a trio of singers, and they would buy. Then they went and bought their cameras. And I'm like, we have got to get this footage put mm -hmm. into a video and get it online because this is like us doing. I mean, you know, a lot of the stuff was was not. We were doing live shows like four to seven days a week, and. We were on the go. We were working. We didn't have time to really record much of that. So now it's so easy. You're just like, you turn on your camera or hand it to somebody. And like your, you didn't... Yeah. And your phone, your camera phone is actually a lot crisper than some of the more higher yeah, quality cameras. <laughs> no, we had the 35 millimeter. That's I've got cameras in here from like 1920 up here. Uh, yeah, We have some yeah. here. They're. But I think CJ actually caught a video of you at Comic Conro. I did. Oh, Can we I'm just show it? Even practice, y'all. Seriously. <laughs> Let me see. Let me I pull mean... it up. Oh no! I was oh yeah. Playing. I, didn't know, I know, know, but it was fun here. I didn't it know was fun. Is it green? CJ Green. TJ. I'm sorry. There you go. We have his business. It's hard to hear. Oh, I can hear it. I can definitely hear it. Yeah. Oh, he was yeah, fun. Had that too. up and ready. That when that was just like a priceless moment. I just was like, okay, there's You're a like, camera. I'm by DC Glenn, performer. and I'm just. She's like, I'm by DC Glenn, and then she starts doing. I'm like, wait, wait, do it again, do it again. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know. I've just been, I've been on stage performing for so long. It's just where I'm comfortable. Mm -hmm. I want to, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, if somebody wanted me to like write a speech and like stand up in front of people and like, like I remember being in communications in college and I was just like, can I like write a song and then sing it? <laughs> like, cause <laughs> I didn't want to, I wasn't comfortable just standing talking. up there and talking. Man, so I'm if there now, was one person that you would want to meet that you've always wanted to meet but haven't had the opportunity to meet, who would that be? Donna Summer. Oh, wow. I did get oh, to wow. see her. I was in the second row. I finally got to see Donna. Like, I literally was like, and to this day, Donna Summer to me hangs the moon. Like, I learned how to sing from listening to her albums over and oh all of them every single one i could get my hands on that was my world was donna summer and neil diamond my mom was a neil diamond person and my dad was into disco so i i i i did not get to meet her i dreamed about it my whole life and then she passed away in 2012 like right i think it was right before my birthday mm -hmm. and i could i mean i was in mourning i had to work i had to sing that morning and that night with a different band and i was just i was wearing all black and i was just like oh <laughs> <laughs> but um there are those yeah. artists i mean when robin williams died my heart just broke mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. so it's like there there's always that that one he was my top uh, like i had my top five he was like my top one he yeah. was my number one and yeah talk about voice actor he was like probably the first one ever he was amazing in yeah so many so he much was... talent and he yeah but you know and i think that there, you know i think it brought a, i think in general it brings an attention to mental illness in general mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. People are walking around even that don't even realize they have an, a mental illness. It's not something you can visually see. And so mm -hmm. my heart's huge for mental health, health awareness, that and um, bullying people that have gotten bullied. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's rampant in any and all 
professions. And so I, I'm a big crusader for people that get picked on and bullied and yeah, I mean, it doesn't cost anything to be nice. It doesn't cost, especially to like cashiers in the grocery store who inevitably yeah, are let, getting ripped up know, one side nice. and down the other with the whole rolls now. And so it's like, it you know what? Just, hey, how you doing? Have a good day. It's you know, even harder are... now with this pandemic. It's like, every, you know, it's like people are, I'll be like, hey, what's going on? <laughs> yeah, <don't laughs> breathe on me. For real. And then, the, mm -hmm. uh, and then those of us who are huggers, it's like torture yes. right now for us. But, you know, and then there are some people the cashiers heard is like, I, I swear, I walked up to one and go, you look really happy to be here. She was standing like this. <laughs> and she stood like that the whole time. I'm like, wow. Some people are just another day at work, another day back at the grind. Yeah. yeah. I, I, know. I always cuss out the cashier. Uh, no, Self-checkout. Self-checkout. What can I say? I know. <laughs> Anything to you, Greg? That poor machine. Oh my God! That's you gotta be like that for real. Because yeah, yeah. it never reads the scanner when I need it to read it. Yeah, you know, oh, what? almost every time you have to call a real person over there anyway. I know. Yeah. yeah. But Hang on, uh, help is on the way. Yeah. yeah. What bothers me is like you know I have that card where you just have to tap the screen because you know it's just so inconvenient for me to actually swipe my card for whatever reason. And then, <laughs> doesn't work half the time or like you think you're supposed to put it like over the picture where like you're supposed to they're like no it goes on the screen so then i touch the screen and then it does nothing i'm like oh screw it that's a new level of laziness i know i, I don't want to swipe the card i just I never said touch I it lazy. <laughs> okay? i never said that i was just right. saying I have I know. a new feature where like at gas pumps yes. where I can just like tap it. So lovely. It works so easy there. To spend money. Ding, ding. Yeah, but every I know. See, that's the bad thing too. It's just like, oh, it's just a tap away. Take my money. You know, like the cupcake lady. That's what happened there. It's just <laughs> take my money, you know? So it's yeah. like, oh my goodness. Oh, I can't handle it. I just Yes, we were Amy and I were at Galveston Island Esports Summit and they had a lady there selling cupcakes. Yeah. Oh, oh my god. god they weren't just cupcakes the 70 they, they were... had different flavors every day and i bought damn near every flavor every day <laughs> yeah. that's and i thought that's it was my just... thing that's my thing now is sugar yes. sugar and coffee drinks with lots and lots of cream and ice i cream. will that's my thing right now man. tell you so... i am on day three of no soda no caffeine oh we're not allowed to talk sugar i forgot we can't yes. talk sugar nobody <laughs> has been killed <laughs> yet <laughs> Now, Nobody has been killed yet, but I'm known as a literary assassin. So the right person crosses me, I know how to hide the body. Greg, I'm, dr like, I'm drinking Greg coffee doesn't... daily. I was She's already on cup. I was already on cup five at saying. 10 a.m. That was directed at Craig. I'm just saying. That's because yeah. I'm getting booted nope. off at the end. So it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> I'm right great. behind you. As soon as this hot weather cuts it out, I mean, we're going to start walking and riding the bikes. And I, that sounds like an excuse, but really, we've been super busy. But that's the thing is no sodas. I, I thankfully got off of sodas a long time ago. But Dan, my right-hand man, is off of the sodas. And now we're, like, watching what we eat, when we eat. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Now time to move more, eat less, blah, 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 blah. Well, right? I don't like the taste of coffee. So mine was always oh. bean free caffeine. Yes, no. Put it, put it, drown it in milk and creamer. I That's trust I me, I, I can still either. taste it. It's kind of like tea. If it to yeah. me, ta tea tastes like dirt and coffee tastes like mud. So it's like if I can't right. taste either one of them, then I'll drink it. But chances yeah. are, I can probably still taste it because I'm not sensitive uh, yeah. to it. So I, I add just, coffee to my creamer, basically. <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> That's what I, I do. Not, I, and I it has to be, yeah, yeah, it has to be like a pumpkin yeah. spice or a gingerbread yeah, yeah. or something like White that. White chocolate mocha. That's what got me started. I was like, this is coffee? This is a freaking milkshake. This is not coffee. <laughs> I, I call them hot chocolates. They, That's yeah, basically what they are, hot chocolates. Amy, what's Red. your vice? Which one's yours? Huh? No, I don't feel like what? that's fair because I keep Starbucks in business in my small town. <laughs> so I'm just yeah. throwing it out there. I mean, it depends on the time of year. So summertime, usually they have the s'mores frappuccino and that's like my go-to. And then the holidays, the chestnut praline latte, but you can't get a small, you got to get a vente. And then if it's super hot outside, but I have not had my coffee, it's an upside down caramel macchiato. But yeah. if it's after two, then it's a strawberry <laughs> acai with lemonade, right? I can't just okay. give myself one. My kid's got to have one too. It's a whole shebang. Right. 
I'm a gold yeah. member there and I get enough points to get free cups. And I'm not talking the free drinks. I'm talking about their venti <laughs> cups that are reusable. I'm just throwing it. I don't, yeah. you, I don't you shouldn't have asked. You opened up Pandora's box. <laughs> no, I'm I'm gonna, gonna, uh, do you take stock? I'm gonna, in, you have stock in Starbucks at least. I will <laughs> never <laughs> tell. I will never tell. <laughs> That's and I, my dirty thing. I'm my, sitting in line behind her yeah. saying, all I wanted was a straight black coffee. Yeah, he does. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you want a mocha? You don't want like something like, you know, like you want like a little, yeah. oh. I want a mocha. And I'm like, okay, you want one pump, two pump? You want to add some extras? What's going on here? He's like, can you yeah. shut up and give me my mocha? Shut That's your mouth. Coffee. <laughs> Man, nobody drank coffee at when we were growing up, that was just not in no, but none of my friends all through all through our twenties, none of us were drinking co coffee. Yeah, yeah like, I do like the I said, if you put yeah, if I, you make it into a milkshake and there's a little bit of coffee. In yeah. It. <laughs> I, just, I, like I do bean free caffeine. It, you know, I'm all for that. But, I, I'm but. I need to try that now. That I didn't even realize that was existed. We have yes. so many oh. choices. Yes. So and now I'm completely off, like I said, for three days now. My husband is still alive. He is being a sweetheart, being very patient with me. My cat and my dog are still alive. But, you know, yes. anybody who crosses me the wrong way may be finding themselves in trouble. They're yeah. sleeping in the closet. Oh, really? <laughs> They're staying safe. <laughs> They're staying sane. <laughs> Cassie, go to your yeah. room. <laughs> Cassie, go to your room. <laughs> I have my own room. I have the treehouse, the office. So, you know, just That's take me great. upstairs. I wish yeah, I so I have so, a new website, stephanie.com that's coming out, and I should have done yay. that years ago. Just now? I've always looked at it as, like, I'm kind of, I'm still, like, climbing the mountain and that I haven't arrived. Like, I haven't gotten to where I really wanted to in life. Like, and, and, and I think that's why it's so important that people talk about this now is that the journey, it's like the journey, it's not like the, you're looking for, you know, you've got your goal, but you've got your journey. Well, I'm starting to realize now that all this time I've been climbing and I haven't gotten where I really want to be. Like my aspirations are like ginormous. So yeah, I'm, I'm happy and I'm thankful set for high goal for yourself. the career that I have. But I mean, I've always, I want, I've always wanted, it's not that I've wanted more money. I've not wanted more fame. It's just that I've wanted to achieve more personal goals. Like, and, and also just, I mean, I really want to sit down and write music and do albums, but it's like I have to stop what I'm doing and do it. You can't just say, well, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. I mean, you really have to like look in the mirror one day and just go, OK, if I'm going to do this, stop everything else because I just I find myself so distracted and I'm going to do this and then I'm going to do a little bit of this. And, and in between some of my roles and traveling, I was working retail then I was waiting tables and um then I was a brand ambassador for a while. And then I did uh, demos and tastings and I, I did all kinds of stuff because I'm just a, I got to stay busy. It's good when that's, I stay busy. Mm -hmm. That's so. definitely me. I have to stay good. busy because for me, be. it's my fight. That's uh -huh. for me. Your own Keeping busy. Thing. Right. So, I mean, I, 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 like this career, people talk about this career and this, all these things you've done. And to me, I'm not, I haven't achieved everything I want yet. I mean, I know I'm getting older, but I'm not, I'm not anywhere close to where I thought I would be at this age. But then people would put your Goku and go on. And I'm like, that's awesome. But I'm not, that's not, a, that's not it. I mean, I haven't voiced that character in 10 years. <laughs> I finished all of that yeah. years ago. Well, and it's so. like, you no. have to kind of every, every year, at least once I will go through and I'll be like, okay, what are my goals? What is my, where's my target? What's my mm -hmm. five range and my 10 year range? And like, right. am I on the target for that? Or am I just flailing around? Because if you're just yeah. flailing around, you're not really focused on what you're wanting to do. Mm -hmm. And so keeping busy, mm -hmm. I've got some OCD in me and my ADD yeah. in me. So I'm able to yeah. balance the two together. Right. And it keeps me really busy because I'm mm -hmm. an author, blogger, podcaster, and publisher. And mm -hmm. so doing yeah. all of that and Come keeping on. it all balanced and juggling, it's, it can be insane, but I do not do anything near what this chick over here does. Amy's like <laughs> insane. She like but, needs caffeine. Yeah. yeah. One question I, that I'm I would not, have. I don't know. I'm just, I'm not done. Like I'm nowhere near where I, I don't know how to explain that. Like I'm extremely grateful and thankful. And like, if I get hit by a truck, it's like, wow, that was a cool life. I mean, I hate to be morbid, <laughs> but like, I'm, I'm just, in some ways I feel like I'm kind of finally 
taking off in a way like because mm -hmm. I, I had so much dark destruction happen around me and I had to really figure out how to get my way out of some really dark places and now I am and now this whole new world of technology and is is at our fingertips and then it's a matter of learning how like I don't know what I don't know how I have a clue how you guys are doing what you're doing right now I mean I'm like <laughs> I have to have my technical advisor help me set all this up like I had just haven't learned yet you know but like you put me in front of a mic yeah. or you put me on a stage I'm ready I can I know what to do innately but it's well, as far as the behind the scenes thing, if everybody like, everybody no. has their gifts you know some yeah, people right. are tech people some people are front runners some people are behind the scenes some people are organizers and it's always right. like you always look mm -hmm. at the person and go oh I wish I was like them and it's like no because you're like you right. and there's no one else like you so right. you take your gifts and then that Combine person takes with, their gifts and right. together you can both all rocket shoot up. We're like a big puzzle. We're yeah. all exactly. We're all little pieces. One gigantic yeah. puzzle. And now, some the one question. don't seem to fit in and some pieces fit in nicely and some pieces... Well, the ones that don't fit in, you just get them where you want them and just start pounding them down. Isn't that what we do right. with puzzle pieces? Greg, right. right. what's the question, man? What's the question? Now, the one question I have as being an author and writer... Uh, you just mentioned songwriting. Mm -hmm. How difficult is it to actually put the lyrics to the music? That um, to me would be extremely hard. Yeah. Well, for me personally, I'm a better, like I used to write poetry when I was a little girl and I kept a journal and I did a lot of writing. Like I actually considered going into journalism and doing some, some um, things with my writing, but uh, my passion for singing and music always kind of took over in that. Uh, and yeah, once I got, uh, into my music with Vince Vance and the Bags and traveling and everything. I mean, we were going, going, going 250 day, days a year. Like we were constantly on the go. But when I did uh, meet up with um, this lead founder of, of Brave Combo, and we sat down and I mean, he was writing the songs and I was singing his music, but he needed the voice for his material. And that, that was like a, 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 a compilation of two talents, different varied talents that worked together. And then, we were able to go into the studio and record because he had been doing that already. He was a musician. He could play um, accordion, keyboards, and bass. So I learned a lot of that songwriting process through working with him. And then I was able, like my talent was early on was not just the poetry, but then taking poetry and the, the vocal talent and then changing the words to songs that already existed like Weird Al and then make them funny and then rewrite the whole song and then produce that mm -hmm. and so I was doing that for a while for morning show radio back in my I don't know mid to late 20s and um, met a lot of people in the radio industry which was really cool um, and then they were hiring me for a little bit of voice work as well but that was really fun because I could actually go home and do my work at home and make up these funny topical parodies about what's going on in the world and then take a song and and put it together and then they would either like it or not like it and I would get with my musician friends and we would knock it out and produce it and then after that, um, the writing my own stuff, which ended up being novel stuff and using kids' voices. I did a song called Kids Christmas. You can find that on YouTube. It's just Kids Christmas. And um, helped write, write the lyrics. And then I had to hire my musicians to actually lay down the tracks. And that ended up being Crawl as well. And, and we also did some animation themes with Funimation at the time, or a few years later. Um, he was involved in producing a lot of those and changing the Japanese lyrics translated over into English. And then we corresponded with that and collaborated on some of that. And I sang some of those. And then we I, actually, I knew a lot of singers and a lot of people in the industry. So we sought out voices to be placed with these themes. And then I actually got to produce and like be behind, you know, the director's chair directing a singer and coaching them on how to sing the song and, and, capture the essence of what they have so that was like a really cool experience to be behind you know kind of be behind the scenes a little bit and see how things mm -hmm. go and that's why where i'm using utilizing a lot of that with my with my students now is like making them comfortable so that they can be and shine their light and like <laughs> kind of like be their like cheerleader like come on you can do it you know make them comfortable so they can sing or they can relax so that they can work on their craft so well, i know um, a lot of um actors do that they start off acting and then they do some of mm -hmm. the producing and then they do some of the direction yeah. sort of thing so is that kind of the direction where you're heading or um 
I, I'm I'm open to that possibility. And then I think as I get older in life, I think I would be comfortable doing that. But as far as voice acting and singing, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna just I wanna be back. I wanna be back on stage. I'm ready. I'm ready to put together. I mean, I've been in and out of just different bands all over the years. Um my friend Dan and I go back to 2003 when we were in a band called The Project and then we joined forces and we were putting together a band called The High Rollers for the Windstar Senior Breakfast. Well, that was crazy insane because like we were driving up to a casino at seven in the morning when we're used to playing weddings and parties on the weekends till two in the morning, three in the morning or whatever. So we had to like flip flop our schedule, get in a car, drive an hour and a half at you know six or seven in the morning and then perform at eight o'clock. Hey, we've had our coffee and all the seniors are there and they come in and have their free breakfast and line dance and we were done and home by noon. You know, it's like, what <laughs> is this? But it ended up being this crazy, insane, awesome thing. And that lasted four years. So we got to know these seniors because we were there twice a week for four years. And that was crazy. Like, that was awesome. So I want to get back into performing not only live, but also to doing some songwriting and actually cut, finally cut my album I've been wanting to do my whole life. Like, slow down, harness your energy, and do it. But like you said, like CJ, you said, you have to, you can't just do it. I mean, you have to mm -hmm. sit down and plan it. You have to have an outline. You have to have your people in place. You have to have money. You have to have funds um, to ha book the studio time. Or if you don't have your own studio, you've got to get with people that do. And then, you you know, you can kind of hand, and I know a lot of musicians, and I know a lot of amazing musicians, and I'm going to want to get them in there, but I'm going to pay them. You know, that's mm -hmm. what they do. They're that good. I'm going to pay them for their work. And so... I've been saving and saving and saving money so that I can finally do this and fund this project. And it's like, I got to do it before I. Have you started working on songs for it yet? Um, not, not yet. Like what I, what I've kind of wanted to do, especially now that I have this platform with the Dragon Ball Z and the, the anime, anime platform is a lot of the fans are wanting to hear what I've already, what I've already done. And, so I'm really wanting to, to find that material and secure it and get it up online and so that that can be accessible. And then as I have time and can make time, I'm going to start sitting back and writing. But I miss the uh, the parodies. I miss writing. I had one called Broccoli Spears. And um, <laughs> it was, you know, oh, squash and tomatoes, corn and potatoes. And it was all about eating vegetables. And it, was, and it ended up being... You should just do one time. of those. I mean, that would probably... <laughs> I already did. It's already produced. I just have to get it online. No, but I mean like I've a done. collection of them because that yeah, would probably parody. sell pretty good. Yeah, I did it's one beautiful. for um, in, when Kelly Clarkson was the big uh, American mm -hmm. Idol star mm -hmm. we, and the, her song was A Moment Like This. I wrote one about Thanksgiving turkey and it was called A Turkey Like This. Is could this be the greatest butterball? You know, and the whole song, <laughs> like the whole song, start to finish. It's about Thanksgiving dinner. And then I, that's when I sat down and wrote the kids' Christmas song. And then I'm like, oh, now we got to do one for Halloween. It's almost Halloween. So then I wrote a song about Halloween and trick-or-treating. And then I did the voices. And then my friend Carl came in and laid down the music. And these are like, I mean, they're kind of like hidden treasures. Like they're kind of masterpieces. And, and they're just, they just were never released in a yeah, while. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, though. You should do like way. one of just like that. Because people love that stuff. Like this person. I can't. It's Funny, say who it is entertaining. but they would pay to hear that people pay to hear that type of stuff even davy jones when he was doing his comic he's like i uh, tried to make like the worst comic strip ever and people love it so it's like people they'll latch on i need mean laughs now yes especially well that was everything fun is so because serious. it wasn't just like i'm a singer i'm a voice actor i'm a it, it was a combination of comedy mm -hmm. the singing ability and then the mimicking ability of mimicking the original artist and a lot of this material ended up going to radio morning morning show radio uh networks of people that sign up for that service and then tm century which was in dallas they would put together all of this stuff you know weekly <laughs> a and dragon ball musical <laughs> and do like 10 15 30 <laughs> seconds of each thing i mean we did one from a, a song called um uh, I got to get coffee. I got to get coffee. I got to, got to, got to make it through. Yeah. I got to get coffee. And then we did another one. I got to sit in traffic. You're going to sit in traffic. And it's uh, the whole song's about that. And these little like bumpers that you can hear on the radio. They're funny, funny stuff. And so I don't know what happened there, but I'm, uh, I want to get back into that. Cause that was fun. Like it was using a lot of talents that were just completely kind of quirky mm -hmm. being able to be able uh, to write it or take a song, change the lyrics 
write it, make it rhyme, make it funny, make it topical that people can relate to and then produce it and then get it out there. Mm-hmm. Like I always called myself, you know, growing up, I'm weird Stephanie, you know, weird Al. <laughs> I can do this. I'm Polish, you know. <laughs> there you I, go. I can relate to that whole Weird Al thing because it incorporates the humor. And so, I I actually, that, you know, I, I actually guess saw I him in concert. Serious singer, but really, I think what I'm best at is utilizing multiple talents like that: the singing, the comedy, the the mimic. You know, mimicking the original artist. I mean, I did one for Christina Aguilera called. She had a song called Beautiful, and I call and I wrote a whole new one called Pitiful. So the whole song is like, I am pitiful, you know, and I just wrote the whole thing that everything's just disgusting, really. <laughs> and it's just silly. It's funny. It's it's lighthearted. Yeah. You know? The world needs more of that, though. Yeah. I'm That's joining something. forces with an, 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 a voice actor. His name is Mark Britton, and we're going to probably put together some com- comedy. He's been doing stand up for like a couple decades. Like I met him way back when we first got cast in the show together and then he went off and did some other things and actually did stand up so now he's like Stephanie have you ever thought about doing stand up and I'm like no (laughs) I mean people have said I'm funny and like I think he's hilarious and we were just going back and forth at this convention at Bell County Comic Con and we were just going back and forth with these voices and we were just like whoa like we've got this chemistry and you can do that voice and I can do this voice and he can sing too like he doesn't think he can but he can and he'll mimic a singer you know and then I'm kind of like I don't know it's like we're, we're thinking about doing something with that I think I'm that'd like, be fun. I'm so not like stand-up comedian. Like I've just not done that. But like, see, I, here's the I, thing, I, though. You I, actually are because if you're able to transform those songs into something that's hysterically funny, you do have comedic bones in you, and I it's just like you have to funny. have the confidence to do it. And when oh, you yeah, can yeah. find somebody that you do connect with, uh-huh. and you have a good chemistry with, and we can laugh and kick each other, kind of like our crew here. Um, yes, you got to take it and run with it. And just right. Have fun and that's it. what I would be comfortable at is actually prep prepping for it, writing the music, learning it. Cause I, I also did one call about um, you know, Pink, her big huge first hit, I think, was Get This Party Started. Mm-hmm. And I rocked mm-hmm. that one with um uh Get Me to the Potty because she's like really sick <laughs> and she's been drinking too much. So the whole song I wrote the whole song about, you know, um I'm throwing up, so you better get the mopping bucket. I'm blowing chunks. I'm hurling. I'm, uh, you throwing can up, record these. They sound like gold. Get me to the potty, and then the whole song is about you know throwing up. You you got it. You gotta. You gotta. I'm it's sorry. A, it's a silly. It's it's kind of immature, and some people are like. But that's that's what people like to hear. I mean, if you can make somebody laugh right by a song, I mean, come on. I mean, you have have the ability to sing and you can mimic the singer. That's just I mean, Mark and I were talking, I was like, this is just genius. We need to do this. We need to there's two of them. Weird Al, and then there was Cletus T. Judd Mm -hmm. for the country music. Yes. And then who was the lady that was the actress that put out the song? Um, and she did all the characters, she did the sketch comedy. Gosh, I can't think of her. Oh, name. I know who you're talking she about, do, but I all can't these think. Characters, and she put out a mm-hmm. song. She had a hit in like the late '80s. But... I don't know, but it kind of reminds like Carol Burnett, where she keeps it's changing Carol. characters. It's yeah. like Carol Burnett, but she's an um, um, not. She's more like late '80s, early '90s. Anyway, I think late Tracy, Tracy Allman. Allman. That's it. See, Thank you, Steve. Yes, <laughs> my mom and I watched Carol Burnett when I was growing up, and I I love Carol Burnett. It. So that was one of my definite watches every year or every night. Put, was but like you said, putting the music and the voices and the singing and the, and acting it out. Yeah. On stage or in a video. I mean, if you, can... especially if you've already got the material, I yeah, mean, I you need to just knock that out. Just... I've got one about uh, Christmas returns. R-E-C-I-P-T. That's our store policy. R-E-C-I-P-T. <laughs> bring it back. Bring it to me. It's all about like the lines after Christmas. I mean, I've written a whole bunch of these things just really honestly for fun. So maybe I should do something with like that. I do. I'm one of those people that some people will like, Amy Rev's important. <laughs> that must be James. Is that, that is James. James? That's James yeah. Chisholm. Love you too, um, James. Love you too, man. So it's like, well, notice I didn't put his up about me. I just went and said thank you. Said, thank you. <laughs> yeah, so Greg is this weird. Greg, no singing, no comedy involved. Um, but I wear was, like going with a, oh, a lot a of times people will research the tar to something and like never do it. But it's like oh, if you've already got ideas, right? if you've already got all the all of 
the material. All the components are all laying out like a bunch of Legos, yeah. and I just, and just do it. Lego. I'm one of those. I'm one of those. Just product. jump in with both feet, tape people. Go for it. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm going to do next is uh, with the help of Mr. Dan Bradford, bass bass player extraordinaire, and he's now on my payroll. Hi, Dan. He's, is he, he up, back there? Hi, Dan. He's in, he, he just got home from work. Hey, Dan. Yeah. We, We've got a business thing going here, and he's like, Stephanie, you got, got a whole business thing. We need to sit down, and you got to get your taxes done this way, and you got to have this and that, and all this. You know, it's it's not just about having a business. You've got to have your ducks in a row, like literally. Mm-hmm. Like you've got to like. It's like, oh crap, this. You know, I'm starting to make some kind of some serious money now. What do I do now with all this? And he's like, you got to get an accountant mm-hmm. and all this stuff. I'm like, okay, well, so that's where where um he can come in and help me with those business, the business side of it, and like. I'm sending, I mean, I'm already sending people 1099s right now whenever we have our show band stuff. I send, you know, I write the checks and all that. And I've been a band leader, so there's no reason why I can't learn how to do this kind of stuff. And we are definitely going to be getting this stuff on the internet soon. Yeah, I mean, because you can, sell, you can sell that stuff at the Comic-Cons. I promise you, they will go. If they're, yeah, they're well, gold like yeah, that, and, they'll be gone. Right, and I mean, if there's copyright stuff, we'll do it. I mean, I'll pay it, whatever we got to do. But I mean, to get it out there and get it in their hands and mm-hmm. and see, maybe some, I mean, I'm, I'm always thinking of stuff like that, y'all. See, like, I'm trying to fire you up. I'm trying it, to get you to do it. There's that. Um, and you can send me 1099 too. <laughs> James wants to know if you can send him 1099 too. <laughs> right. Okay. You're hired, buddy. <laughs> you know that song, When I Come Red, I Come Around? Well, I mean, I wrote one called Viruses Go to Round, and I'm coughing, and I'm sneezing, and I'm hacking, and I'm wheezing. I mean, you just write the whole song about COVID. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, you got you to gotta get that stuff on. It's gold. <laughs> yeah. Well, speaking of conventions, what, what conventions are you going to be going to next? I know you have one this weekend. I do. After with that, the falls. When, Most of them have been Texas lately with the whole pandemic thing. It's just, I've just been kind of like creeping out slowly mm-hmm. as, as they're available to go to and to be a guest mm-hmm. at. So that this weekend is Wichita Falls Collectible Con. Um, and that's right here this weekend is right before Labor Day. And then after that, oh my gosh, what am I doing after that? I mean, it's that busy now. It's like, what am I doing tomorrow? I know. Every time I turn around, you're posting up a new a new con, and I'm just like, dang, I thought yeah. I was busy. <laughs> yeah, and then I'm also prepping for the 50th anniversary for Vince Vance and the Valiant, so I'm doing some of that, and then um, making sure I'm available. Like, I had to, like, not go to a con that weekend so I can do- devote it to that. It was a big deal. 50 years with a band that I was with, mm-hmm. 30 years. It's like, I gotta be there and support my my fellows you know and all the value net girls that used to be in the band it's going to be a lot it's going to be really really cool so i've got that coming up and then that's going to be the 24th in the dallas area and then he's got one in new orleans on the 19th which i may or may not be able to go to with everything that happened with the storm and with i'm not really Mm -hmm. sure if i want to venture out and tackle that or not but um and then i've got some other ones coming up in october i've got i just signed in with uh, midwest oklahoma con in an uh, outside of Oklahoma City, and that's going to be. I'm really excited because I'll get to be there with uh, Cynthia, Cynthia Krantz and Tiffany Vollmer, and we were all cast long, long ago. You, you know, years ago, back when we were Dragon Ball Z and Funimation was this little mini company, <laughs> and um, we were all hired around the same time, so we're all about the same age, and we kind of feel like we kind of sort of grew up together, even though we weren't like together a lot. But these cons were kind of reuniting, so that one's going to come up, and that's the first weekend of October. I'm waiting impatiently to see if I can go to Indianapolis because my father's in Indiana and I have not seen him uh, in literally like nine years. Mm. Like I, my dad and my dad and mom split when I was six and we were always out of state because we were always moving and then he was moving. And so to see my dad, that's my, my papa bear is up there and he's getting older and I need to go see my daddy. So I'm hoping I get to go to Indianapolis for a con the weekend of the 15th of October. Well, James wants to know if you're doing know. anything on December 4th. That is the day before my mama's birthday. I don't have anything planned, but I, I do have Del Rio. I used to live in Eagle Pass, so I'm going back to Del Rio in November. That's November 6th. I'm excited about that, too. And then I've got a couple of events coming in, coming up in San Antonio. Well, I know. Is it NerdCon or NerdFest? I always get them messed up. NerdFest is, is, nerd nerd nerd. is the, uh, nerd Fest nerd is the Facebook group. NerdCon is the convention. That's what I think and he's that asking is December about. 4th. That's what he's asking oh. about. He's he's the coordinator for NerdCon. Oh, I'm going to just fit. I finally fit right in. I'm, I, I, I didn't realize it all these years, but I'm such a nerd. 
<laughs> no, I, I really have like had trouble fitting in to this world. And I mean, I really feel like I fit in at those conventions, like, because uh, they nerd kind is the like convention. In, so. I'm a misfit. Hey, we're <laughs> all the island. We're all, all we're all the all island there. misfit toys. So it's yes, okay. nobody wants a Charlie in the box. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> yeah. And What's not a lot the... of people would know what I meant by that. So good catch. I know. See, I was telling Dan, I'm like, we're so old now. Like, I'm, you know, almost to see, and he's 60 something. And we're just like, crap, what's going to happen to all these youngsters? Like, we're not our, the things we're saying that we yeah. learn from our parents are slowly fading, you know, like yeah. the pop culture mm -hmm. of what we grew up with and all the cassette tapes and all that. And like, my nieces think that's crazy. They're like, oh, Stephanie, that's vintage. Those are VHS tapes. And I'm like, oh my God, they're vintage? I'm like, yes, we're vintage That now. was only 20 years ago when we were playing VHS tapes. Crap. Yes. But see, that's Don't the thing that though. Was, we, have, we can have like our own language, like our own right. handwriting, because a lot of the youngsters weren't taught cursive. So we could have like our oh, own little I code going on. Grade. We, we all have like yes. our own little inside jokes about, you yeah. know, rewinding the tape with a pencil. And... Right. Right. It's just, it's, it's, I mean, they, people get it. And, and it's, it's the yes, 20, Amy will keep the old stuff alive. 20, almost 30 somethings. Um, still kind of, I mean, I can chat with, with a 25, 30 year old and we can have a conversation and it's cool. And, but there's still some things that, the age difference is it's really starting to be <laughs> like, I could sorry I talk about a pay just... phone, answering machine, cord. I phone, remember, I remember dial, all of those things though. Phone I, book. Mean, I, I remember the phone book. I remember VHS. Yeah, yeah. I remember Blockbuster we like, yeah. and I miss um, Blockbuster. I radio miss Schleck, Schleck, and then I remember it. having the phone on the wall with the corded phone, you yeah. know, and then like you had yeah. AOL instant messenger, you know, and you prayed that to God. Really one, get, right? Yeah. And you're like, yep. please Everybody call me while you're on like i remember all those things passing notes in class and that's how you used okay, to she does see i remember all of those yeah. you know it was simpler times and i look back at those sometimes now and how like everything is just literally at our fingertips and i'm like man i miss this simple times like my girls it's will like never have to pass has. notes you know, so it's like, I don't know, it's things like that where I'm like, man, I wish being young again, you know, like I miss being yeah. little. You yeah. know? Jump on my bike and disappear until dinner time, till the yeah, you know, the yeah. I, mean, I remember all those things. I'm not, you know, I'm not, yeah, playing football in the streets and yeah, <laughs> street light comes on Absolutely. is when you go home, yep. otherwise, you're out all day. Your parents have no idea where you are or if you're okay, if you're even alive. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> I disappear for hours. I like, and I was not older i was a, like super young and i was fearless Six, i mean it's seven years old yeah happened mm -hmm. i'd be yeah. i'd be gone like miles on but it's a different it's a different no, world outside. like you could go yeah. play outside and you didn't have a worry in the world mm -hmm. right and then yeah. i mean you know like you should you should have locked your doors back in the day but you didn't have but to like you didn't it's like safe. oh but we didn't lock the doors I'm glad yeah like you felt, yeah. you felt mm -hmm. safe and now it's like i can't sleep unless my door's locked my fans going all of my like windows everything right. is like i need to be in fort knox you know like that's just how like you're safe cold. right yeah so, mm -hmm. i mean it's, it's and i have my car stolen you know i just randomly as at a starbucks it's been a while now but like people will just jump in your car and drive off like you cannot just not, I mean, even when you jump in and out and get coffee and come back, you can't even do that anymore. I mean, depending on, there's a criminal element like lurking, like there's people that watch it's, for those opportunities. Yeah, all the time. Like it's, it's so sad, but like, I, I mean, I, I'm 29 people. I remember those things. Okay. I still remember yeah. them. Right. They're right. I get noise, but I, I remember them. So yes, right. James, I, I will keep the old stuff alive and you know, I guess I'm keeping you alive too, Greg. Like, I, I, don't know. <laughs> I, I haven't figured that part out yet. <laughs> there's like Google and there's like, we're recording right now. I mean, like there's going to be things around in this newer format for years to come and then when things change that that'll that'll change along with it yeah like when you so, say you're you have to tap your credit card well think about yeah. five ten years from now you just have to think about i'm gonna buy that well yeah i mean okay, but even, even <laughs> like, then, like if i wanted to use like if i had an apple phone i could do apple pay or google pay and i could just right. hold my phone and it would do it right i didn't even need a card anymore mm -hmm. but it'll be interesting to see like in the future because right. you know you've already come such a long way what yeah. is still left for us to like discover right. and invent and do, you know? So there's always people, like 
an element there. I mean, you can, yeah. there's an app for Sam's Club. You can pretty much check yourself out as you're grocery shopping. There's oh, GPS, but yes, like, I, it's yeah. kind of scary though. People can find you. Like, I mean, mm -hmm. it's good for like law enforcement and for taking safety precautions and finding mm -hmm. where people are. And yeah. only utilizing but it's that scary. Purpose, but like, oh, it's yeah. I turn scary. my location off or like an mm -hmm. app that wants to know where I'm at. I'm like, mm -hmm. like nope. Only when I'm using it. I want to know where I'm at, you know. But the Sam's yeah. Club thing, CJ, I know you can buy online and stuff, which is, you know, great. And you Like during the pandemic, that was great. You could have it in your car and everything. But there's just something about, for me, going into like Sam's or Costco. It's like this big warehouse. And I yeah. like to go up and down the aisles and see what like nifty little things they have. And they no, go, you can oh, actually, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the fact that you take your phone as yeah. you're shopping. Not shopping mm -hmm. online, shopping in the store, um, and yeah. you scan it as you're going, and you yeah. can check out that way. Where have I been? QR codes, y'all, y'all. You yep. so can just scan it on your phone, and you yep. obviously pull up the menu at a restaurant. You can do, people are like, yeah. have you noticed? You guys probably know this more than I do. People walking around there, instead of handing you like a card, or <laughs> they do hand you a card, they hand you. Something yeah, I was brought you by <laughs> Yeah. Boom! Your website pops up. It's like yeah. I love that though. Like I love the yeah. the whole like convenience aspect of it's, it. You know, mm -hmm. I'm still trying but, to learn Instagram though, y'all. I'm so I'm Facebook. I'm old school. I still keep a calendar that I write in. Do you guys okay? That. Okay. Do you okay. guys remember? I'm about to date myself. Here. Do you guys remember <laughs> MySpace? Yeah. Yes, yeah. That was. That I used was to it. spend. Yeah, I used to spend hours picking my background and the music, yep. and I had to like go just right, you know. And then if it yeah. did, then it's like, oh crap, I gotta fix this, you know. Right. And I don't know. I would change it all the time. Yes, I totally remember that. See, I remember mm -hmm. Facebook more than anything though, because with me moving around a lot, I could never establish my own roots as a kid, and mm -hmm. so. Having moved around is great now because I can be a chameleon, but now I can go find all my people and they find me. And it's like yeah. this reunion. Like I've got a friend in San Antonio. Now we're, now we're like, we're almost like best friends. Like we're so different, but like we, like we grew up and developed these roots together when we were very young, like seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, like crucial years that you remember. And she, all my friends were, it was on the border of Mexico. All my friends were Mexican Americans. And I was like total minority, like, you know, little white girl, you know, <laughs> and that was my, that was my best friend. And she said, Stephanie, you used to sing and you used to put on concerts and I've never seen you sing now. And here it is 38 years later or whatever. And she's coming yeah. to town to hear, hear us perform at this reunion. And I'm just like, this is like, I'm finding kind of my roots. Like, because I was kind of ripped away from roots right when I was trying to make and form these roots. And then, boom, I was yeah. See, well. that's, mm -hmm. that's like the intent behind social media. That's why it was created. And then it got, you yeah. know, manipulated and, and torn into all these different things, right? But the whole point mm -hmm. was to bring you closer to people that you can't yes. physically be around and to bring families together all over the world. Right. I'm watching all that's my friends great. have kids and now grandkids. Holy crap. Like, <laughs> I love it, though. Like, I mean, yeah. I, I, I'm have this memory so i remember all these things that you know things that happened in school i'm like do you remember the time when you threw a desk at me because you were mad because i got the role in the play and you hated me and like i remember all this <laughs> stuff like i laugh at it now but yeah when it really sucked but <laughs> now i'm like you know we were kids you know yeah and i love facebook i mean people are like who cares about facebook and i mean it, do what you need or do what you I mean, I need, I need it now more for uh, my career than anything else, but yeah, social like media, it's social. Yeah. I don't do Twitter. I, I, I'd never got the hashtag thing. I, I've, I've heard that Twitter can be kind of <laughs> that's fully, okay. fully political. So I don't need that. I've had yeah. that well, you have to keep in mind, like, you know, like fashion is a big fashion wheel and things go out yeah. of trend. And come back. Like the nineties style and stuff is coming back in play now. Mm -hmm. And the nineties so fashion. Yeah, so social media is kind of the same way. There's some that fade yeah. out, and they'll do Trends. something new, and it comes back. So, I mean, it's Trends. pick the one that you like and, and stay on it as long as you're comfortable doing it. You know, it's yeah. not something that is like, oh, I need to go with the times and everything. Because yeah. who would thought, you know, TikTok, you know, I know we're still right. in this pandemic, but, you, you know, I don't know. Sometimes I forget that we're in this pandemic, but I'm, you know, here and have nothing yeah. better to do. But That's it's like, you know, no one would have thought after the pandemic, TikTok would be as big as it is. But those that balloon up really quick tend to fall really hard, you know? So it's like one of those stay at the ones that are yeah. 
our turtles when it comes to being around. Mm -hmm. They're around a long time. That's the new one. I'm, I've been told, get on TikTok, get on TikTok. And I see these videos. I'm like, I could be doing these videos around the house and entertaining people. Yeah. You know, that that enjoy it. I mean, because I'm watching people I don't even know, like strangers. I don't know and I don't really care. Really, I'm just like, their videos freaking hilarious. Little yeah. snippet videos and they're really it's, quick. Yeah. What a mm -hmm. concept. I mean, I wish we had TikTok when I was like 12 and 13. I mean, we were doing our own radio <laughs> I, shows. Like, yeah. We See, were, and I struggle with that. I we're, was a youth leader for 18 years. So we were too busy watching, trying to plus re play and record. Get the songs we wanted, <laughs> but me watching the off the radio, like literally holding my little cassette player up to a radio. Right. <laughs> my thing is, being a youth leader for eighteen years, I've watched what social media has done to teens. Is it's gotten okay. bigger and bigger yeah, and bigger through the years? And it is yeah. not is not good because at least you know, growing up in the eighties, like what I did, you know, it's like you could go home and get away from it if you yep. were being tortured at school. But yeah. you can't do it now. I mean, it finds you everywhere. It does. Mm -hmm. I so. can't even imagine because I was bullied big time. And um, being new girl, I never, I just could not fit. I mean, I was right when I think I was fitting in and they were like getting used to me. Well, boom, I was moving again. Like, yep. I, I was army to... brat. So I get it. We moved every brat, years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, but I mean, I, I got, I mean, people were me like they, I mean, it was bad. It was really bad. Like, but, but now I, I mean, yeah, like you said, you've got more, you, it can be. People are finding more and more ways to troll and bully people mm -hmm. through inter the internet, making up fake profiles, and people yeah. and kids and like you said committing yeah. suicide, and this is horrible. Well, this and sometimes getting information doesn't always help, but then sometimes it does help. I know mm -hmm. with this whole issue over in Afghanistan, there's yeah. a lot. The suicide line from military has like skyrocketed. Yeah, but it's like yeah. there are some groups on like Facebook and stuff where they can also get encouragement and help from other veterans, and so it has its good and it has its bad. It's a tool. It just yeah. depends on who's using it. I think yeah. it depends on yeah and how you, yeah. you use it and what mm -hmm. you let in. You know, like mm -hmm. I don't know. I've also been doing social media for so many years that it's just like right. hey, whatever. Mm -hmm. Send me whatever you want. I'm bad. Whatever. I don't care. I'm an open yeah. book. Well, so. mm -hmm. One thing I, I like do want to add about what people are doing, though, I'm like, I, <laughs> just I do this for a living, I'm a, I'm a performer. I'm a, I want to, I want to. I mean, these are my friends. I want to hear about what they're doing. Yeah, definitely. I want to see pictures of their kids. I want, I want that. Some people are like, I don't care about what you ate for lunch. Well, <laughs> I do rolling. because I'm looking for new recipes. I mean, I am too. I'm like, that looks amazing. What's that? Yeah, what is that? Yeah, it's one thing. Zone, I, right? I respect yes. people's boundaries. One thing I do want to ask before we do head out, because we I know we way surpassed our time as usual. We're good well, at that. I was going to ask you, do we have to have a cutoff time? <laughs> this but is fun. Where, where's know. pumpkin time? What is right. one piece of advice you give somebody that wants to pursue into voice acting or singing or both? That's I get that question a lot. Um, definitely. Um, practice your craft and find try to hone in on what you want to do the like the most and then try to um gain insight and experience like if you want to be a voice actor well the acting definitely helped me with the acting part of the voice acting but mm -hmm. also mimicking recording on my little cassette player recording yourself now you have it like you said at your fingertips recording yourself listen back hone in on what you do that is you that really is something unique about yourself and then seek out the um the guidance the workshop or whatever you can do to get your sink your teeth in and for me i was just literally diving into anything and everything that was related to performing namely singing but the acting the the musicals the broadway i mean all of that stuff ended up being what i was good at like people would say well you need to just focus on one thing well what ended up happening is i had several things that I enjoyed and then by doing them all at the same time I was like wow so I would just say hone in on what it is you want to do like if it's just singing get some lessons um if you want to perform if you want to be in a band if you want to join you know do your own band well then get with people that are doing it get with um um like with the school of rock I'm going to be working at the school of rock and so this 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 music company is a little different in the sense that these are we're musicians that have performed live we are we've either played keys, drums, whatever, an instrument and or sang. And some of us are in bands or forming bands. So this one's more for people that want to do it as a career, which I think is more suitable for me personally, because I did pursue it as a career and was able to have that opportunity. 
So um, just, I think getting, getting involved in as much, uh, getting around people that are doing it. Like, I mean, it depends on their age, you know, like if they're kids, you know, there's, there's music, there's theater, there's things you can do, talent shows, gosh, pom-pom, drill team, acting, drama. If you're a college student, um, uh, maybe major in it or take some classes. There's classes online. There's class, there's workshops <laughs> everywhere. Um, save your money. I, I, me saving money helped me more than you can even imagine. Like I was able to dive into my savings to really get what experience I needed. And when it was feast or famine, if you really do this for a living, it is feast or famine. I mean, like you might have gigs out the nose and then boom, there's nothing on the calendar for a month or two. And you're like, Oh my God. So always have a, a plan, like have a backup plan. If you do want a, a, a degree, get your degree, you know, do it while you're young, but you can be diving into things and, and, and putting your hands in different pies as you are going through schooling or if you're is still in high school or, you know, pursue a degree in musical theater. I mean, there's just, there's no like rule book, unfortunately. There's not like, oh, this is what you do. You know, it's, <laughs> it's going to have to be your own path, but, but be open to suggestions and, and arm yourself for horrifying rejection, like rejection after rejection, even if you are really good at what you do. And if you just stick with it and you really feel like you're good at it and you are, you know, seek representation or whatever, somebody will hear you. Somebody, your role that is that you're made for is out there. It's just a matter of you being persistent and being patient and just working on your craft just constantly. Get, get, get bigger and better at it. Get comfortable with it. Get in front of people. Go to showcases. I mean, there's just so many opportunities to to gain knowledge in this profession. It's 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 more available than ever. It's 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 so, it's so much I can't even list it all. Yeah. yeah. There there is definitely a lot, but I but do I mean, hope I, that... I got the voice acting through the singing by being in a studio recording. So like if you're out and about in the industry doing something in that field, you have a better chance at either getting noticed, have your business cards or, with you, get your re start working on your resume, like anything you do that uh, be an extra, be an extra in a movie. Just watch, take in, be a sponge, take in what's going on around you and learn from it and then put it to use and then, you know, channel it. Like you said, CJ, you have to literally make time to do it. You can't just say, well, I'm going to do this one day. No, and and you, you can there. You can research the tar out of something and never do it. And, and then like, a lot of times you can stand. You can be your own. You can sabotage your own career because you just don't believe enough in your in yourself, mm -hmm. or you're you like you're afraid of success. Or yeah, I mean, if you you're gonna make mistakes. That's just from pe people to understand that from the get go. You're going to make mistakes. It's gonna happen yeah. regardless. Mm -hmm. Right. So right. make your mistakes. Jump in yep. both feet, make your mistakes early, learn from them, and just continue to get better each and every time that you pick up, pick you up it. your, pick yourself up and dust yourself off and go back at it. I mean, and you're going to, you're going to encounter like me personally, I had bullies, man. I had people want to take me out. Like they did not want me to succeed. And mm -hmm. there are people in the industry that will not want you to succeed. There's going to be people that are jealous of you for whatever your energy, the fact that you're nice or you have an, you have an aura, like we all have an aura mm -hmm. and whether you like it or not, you have that energy that is exuding from you in some form or fashion. And it's going to rub people the wrong way. It's just going to happen. Not everybody's going to like you. No, that sucks, I'm, a, right? I'm a big metaphysics person. Are you? Oh, that's a oh, whole yes. other show. I yes, it is. <laughs> My yeah. wife oh. actually was taught me a little bit with Reiki and all that. And uh -huh. So yeah, metaphysics is big. And okay. I love that. energy I, follows I thought, energy that. follows thought and all sorts mm -hmm. of. And then there's like, then you can get into religion and your beliefs and spirit. Yeah. I know that I have a great open mind for spirituality, and so uh, I don't judge others that have different views. Uh, we're all different people, so being mm -hmm. you know having that respect for other people's opinions and views and how they do things, and just do your best to keep things business and. Yeah, and people are going to mm -hmm. like you or they're not. And I've always, I, yeah. I, people either love me or they hate me. There's normally not an in-between. <laughs> yeah. And I've learned that even with my writing, with my personality, it's either love me or hate me. Tough luck. You know, yeah. if you don't like me, I'm sorry that I'm not meant for you. Well, so, and have you ever heard of T.D. Jakes? And you don't even have to be a Christian per se, but like T.D. Jakes has this awesome ser uh, sermon about people 
when they walk away or you need to learn when to walk away yourself. But like when people walk away from you, let them go. They mm -hmm. are not tied to mm -hmm. your destiny. I mean, that's I just, that'll be the song, serious. the gambler yeah. came into my head. Yes. No when to hold them. No when to hold them. No when to walk away and run. <laughs> when to fully get the heck out of Dodge. Mm -hmm. And you don't count your money when you're sitting at the table. Well, yep. what that means is not literally like, you know, you do your business and you go home and then you count your money. You don't mm -hmm. like sit there and go, how much money are we making? Like, you know, it's just not, it's not the way to do it. Definitely. But yeah, the gambler. Listen to the gambler by Kenny Rogers. Advice. People. It's good song. Uh, yeah. Anyway, we we that was one of ours on our set list. Was that song for the high nice. rollers band at the casino? You have been a treat to hey, talk to. You've you been do. wonderful. Thank talk. you for coming on our show. We will definitely have to have you on again. Okay. <laughs> then we when can does your in another hour and a half? <laughs> when does your website launch? It's up now, but it's just in the in the very beginning construction stages. So you can go to stephanienadalny.com and there's going to be some just basic, just a photo and a bio. Okay. And then there's going to be like updates with where I'm going to be next. And then from there, we have a lot of content that needs to be sorted and then yeah, sent to the web right. designer. And then that will have different like Vince fans. And then we're going to have my music. Then we're going to have videos, you know link awesome. to wikipedia imdb all that stuff is coming it's just so just stephanienadalny.com that's it just my name.com okay. awesome. there was a time and i'm like i don't think you're going to be able to spell it or say it and i'm gonna have to have my own band and people are like will you stephanie and i'm like no nobody can say that nobody. and i'm like no okay stephanienadalny.com it's 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 there it's in, I'm, that's cool well you've I been a real treat to talk to thank you for coming on yes thank you for coming on and thank you. nice to meet you amy <laughs> and greg yeah. Trevor. Oh, so, Greg, what's next? Uh, let's see. Next, we'll have our show on the 11 a.m. on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. And then we have, this is what, September? Yep. Then we have 501st Legion. Ah, they're awesome. Can't wait for them. Awesome. They're going to be fun to talk to. They do a lot of charity work. Mm -hmm. So that will be fun. Cool. And what day is that? Is that Thursday at 6? That is Thursday, seven days from now. So next Thursday at, at 6 p.m. Awesome. Okay. So. Well, everyone, it was glad having y'all on, and we will talk to y'all later. Bye. Adios. Bye.